Today is our anniversary over here at Spiritual Gangster Certified. This podcast, this movement, this business of mine for astrology and spirituality was launched on May 15th, 2018, the day that uh, Uranus moved into Taurus. I thought I was being pushed out of my comfort zone to finally start doing this, so it felt like as good a time as any to get it done. So welcome to the third season now of Spiritual Gangster Certified. I am your host, Illy Vish, and I have a backlog of stuff to share with you guys. We are under so much energy that is so interestingly impacting the collective. We gotta talk about it all. We can't do it in one episode, but this is a talk that I did around the full moon in Scorpio. Okay, with the Renaissance mystic. It's mostly about Pluto being retrograde. We have this whole thing that we've been doing with this Pluto retrograde that is already hard to keep up with, and we got till October to go with it. But we talk about that, and, you know, things that you can actually see manifesting as Pluto retrograde, um, you know, in people's behavior and and things like that. So you don't want to miss that. Got a backlog of episodes coming up. To just push out over the next couple of weeks. So I am excited to start this third season. Thank you guys for rocking with me. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey, this is Illy Vish from Spiritual Gangster Certified. And if you haven't heard about Anchor and the fact that it's the easiest way to record a podcast... Let me put you on. First of all, it's free, and we know we can't get any better than free. And it has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or from your computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you don't have to do any extra footwork. They'll send it over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more podcast platforms. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership so tell me where you're gonna find that (laughs) can't find it anywhere else so it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place you want to make sure that if you want to start a podcast that you go get the free anchor app at anchor.fm to get started Welcome back to another episode of Spiritual Gangster Certified. Long overdue. Long overdue. That's all I'm going to keep saying. It's long overdue. But anyway, today, and where we are, Libra is on the extended. I have the Renaissance Mystic. Hey. (laughs) For some reason, every time we do this without me even looking in advance, Libra be on the ascendant. It's true. It's happened several times. Yes. Yes, it has. And we's both Libra rising, so I'm like, ooh. And the ascended degree is close to both of our rising degrees. So I'm just like, ooh, this must mean something. This must mean something. <laughs> <laughs> it is faded. Definitely yes. faded. Yes. There's been so much that has been going on in the world that I hope everybody can forgive me for not being as frequent with episodes as I would like to be, though I'm getting getting a hold on that a lot better I'm learning coding now we're stuck inside (laughs) it's a lot (laughs) yes yes. (laughs) even for my introverted ass it's becoming a lot but today we wanted to talk about some stuff that like I think everybody just needs to hear about because we are all under the influence of it now granted (sighs) this transit that I'm going to focus in on has been going on since April 25th but it's going to go on until October 4th and that transit is Pluto retrograde in the sign of Capricorn 
<sighs> yeah, anyone, deep sigh. Yeah, if anyone wants to join us in a collective relief of, you know, with a deep sigh, please do. Please do. Because we feel you. Before, the, actually, so just to be totally upfront with everybody, the day before Pluto went retrograde, <laughs> I happened to say to the Renaissance mystic, damn, because I was thinking Pluto didn't go retrograde till May. And I was like, oh. <laughs> we're already in the like shadow zone of where Pluto will retrograde. So I was like, we, yes. should, we should like pay attention to this. Cause I had, I just had this feeling inside that it was going to be like, to use the Philly word, that it was going to be drawing. If anybody doesn't <laughs> yeah. know, does anybody know what that is? If you don't, when something's drawing, it's a mess. Like it's, it's doing too much. Okay. Like I just was going to, I knew it was going to be drawing. So what did we decide sweetheart? Tell them. Uh, okay, so we decided that every time we saw some Pluto-related fuckery, bullshit, nonsense, shenanigans, whatever, that we would, you know, take a sip of our Pluto tea. And what we did was we drew the symbol for Pluto on a piece of paper mm-hmm. and wrote down keywords along with it. Yep. And essentially, like, our tea is being charged with those words and then whenever we take a sip of it I feel like it's it's like an alchemization process <laughs> like it sometimes you have to get creative in the way in which you process things and I think this was definitely a creative way in which for us to sort of laugh at what is going on especially since me and you have Pluto um, retrograde natally yeah I wanted um, to yeah I wanted people to like know whether they have it Know your retrograde planets in your chart. Like, do you have Pluto retrograde too? She does, so do I. <laughs> yes. Yes. <clears throat> and because I know that, you know, from the things that you've taught me, um, <laughs> like, yeah. that's what we experience every single day because that is our, like, natural expression of energy. So yeah. it's like, oh, now that like the external world is catching up, like now, n- now it's time for for everyone else to feel that because we feel it on a daily basis, and we're just like, listen, and we're legit, <laughs> we're legit switching roles. Because if you think about it, if when you were born Pluto was retrograde, right? Mm-hmm. Then okay, you're a baby, yay! However long for it to take to come out of retrograde, <laughs> it takes, right? Yes. So then you with your Pluto retrograde energy that you came into being with, now you're dealing with the external world, right? Dealing with the direct. But you still have it inward, okay? So it's like, we normally, when Pluto is direct, that's not an expression that's natural to us. Yes. So we're having to contend with the way, you know, things go. So now it's a role reversal. It's like, okay, this energy that's so familiar to me is now upon all of you. <laughs> and yes. what, does, what does that do? It does two things. Number one, it highlights your Pluto already being retrograde, especially yep. because, let's see, well, mine is in Libra. Wait, you're younger than me, so you're not the Pluto. I'm in Scorpio. Right. So Pluto is- Mine is 18 degrees mine. of Scorpio. See, you're getting, you're getting like a sextile. I'm mm. getting a square to my needle oh. because my Pluto's in Libra but all in all what we could say applies is the fact that you're having to not only deal with your Pluto retrograde being activated more okay uh-huh. but you're used to it but all these people who ain't used to it they ain't dealing with it and then we gotta deal with them so do y'all uh-huh. see the pattern that's here <laughs> Do y'all see yep. the pattern? Um, like, I wanted to kind of liken it to what I was saying this a little bit earlier before we started recording. I want you to look at this energy of it being retrograde. You can kind of look at any energy that's a planet in retrograde motion as this. If I had a cup and the Renaissance mystic put a drop in it, okay? And then I empty out that, that drop. And then she puts another drop in there. And I empty out that drop. Well... The cup is having something enter it and having something leave it. But if I don't empty it every time she puts in a drop, eventually it's going to overflow. So when all of this energy gets pushed inward, it causes, especially with Pluto, like a purging. Yes. 
Because if all this is pushed in, it, it can only contain itself so much before it yes. comes out. Mm-hmm. So what this translates into is that's why we 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 had to do the Pluto T thing because we started seeing Pluto fuckery immediately. I happened to be wrong when I realized, oh my God, we were just talking about what happens when Pluto goes retrograde and we were talking about it the day before. And I'm like, oh fuck. And the first day within four hours of me waking up, I was at three sips of tea. Mm-hmm. We we're now in the 30s. Again. Yes, we're in the 30s. So I thought we could <clears throat> both talk about some experiences or just random things that you've seen that fit the archetype for Pluto retrograde, you know, especially online, because that's one of the only ways we have a way to connect right now because we're not supposed to be near one another, which is so Saturn and Aquarius, but um, <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's super Saturn and Aquarius. Restricting, like, public public yeah, gatherings. Yeah. yeah. How dare oh you God. collective want to, like, do stuff together? Are you crazy? But <sighs> You know, you see it popping up. So what's Pluto, y'all? Like, if we were to really just, like, look at Pluto itself, then we'll look at the sign it's in. But just in general, this is the planet that is in governance of transformation, evolution, rebirth, and also has a lot of themes having to do with its ruling sign, which is, of course, drumroll please, Scorpio. Yes. Scorpio's all also co-ruled by Mars. Its ancient ruler was that. So this is why I always say Scorpio feels like liquid fire. Scorpio mm-hmm. does not feel like solely a water sign. They feel like liquid fire. They got that Martian presence. Mm-hmm. Now when we're looking at the Pluto keywords, like I I pulled up a list so I don't forget any of them. Compulsions is a good one. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw manipulation yeah. first. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I saw death, uh, birth, death, rebirth, compulsions, manipulation, and psychoanalysis. Those are the ones that I was drawn to the most. That's what's come out. Destruction. Destruction, Redef- yes. Eliminate. Dark, yes. dark drives. <coughs> yeah. Ooh, even Rage, dark- decay. Yeah. Empowerment, yep. renewal. Okay, okay. Oh. Relentless, uh oh. Uh huh. Potent force and p- power. Okay, now that we just said power. <laughs> yes. I think that's what I would start with that I've seen. So, just to give you guys in real life working examples, there have been so many like power plays. Yes. So, I have found when I look at my own chart, I have Pluto in the first house, I have it retrograde. I feel and have always felt like. I struggle with people trying to rule me or overpower me or be in control of me. And I don't take that well. Like, I always buck against it. Like, hard. (laughs) Uh (laughs) And the thing is, because my Pluto is in Libra and I'm a Libra rising, my entire life theme is about relationships with other people, connections with other people. So I'm gonna have to deal with connections with other people, obviously, as a major life theme, but then what happens? I find that some of those connections are power plays. So they're coming up even more right now. And they're coming up with people I don't even know like that. Uh (laughs) Which is just so fucking weird. Because the internet. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this, as I always say, you know, we say take what resonates and leave the rest. And also that I am extraordinarily honest. So I do not want to embarrass or offend anybody, but I do want to use some examples of shit that has actually happened. Um, So my apologies in in advance, this first thing that I'm going to say to the person that it involves, I don't really know them. I'm just explaining something that happened. Um, so this is the first day that Pluto went retrograde that I'm talking about me and the Renaissance mystic are like sipping Pluto tea in abundance already like god damn uh-huh. are we gonna make it till October no no we're not we gonna I just it. spent an obscene amount of money on tea because I'm going to need to be stocked <laughs> until this is over <laughs> freaking hilarious and true there's not enough tea there's, there has there's to be not tea. I like, I just started talking about this to her. I had posted some stuff 
like I normally do to my um to my Instagram, my personal Instagram, which feeds into the Spiritual Gangster Certified Facebook page. And I get this message from someone I've never interacted with before. And she's basically like, oh my God, I had something hilarious happen to me. Can you post my video? And <laughs> this is when knowing your chart comes into in handy. Not only your, your natal chart or understanding your own energy, your, your progress chart too. Because, okay, I am a Pisces. I'm a sun size Pisces and a sun, I'm sorry, a Mercury in Pisces. So in general, yes, I am very sensitive to people's feelings. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Like, yes. at the heart of me, that is not the type of experience that I'm trying to have in this world where I'm just being ruthless. But then I get like ruthless things in my chart. So it's like, okay, I get this message from this girl and my honest to God, first initial reaction was my moon sign. My moon yeah. sign, which trines a bunch of other shit in my chart. I'm a Capricorn moon and I was like, this is honest to God, my first thought. And then I felt terrible. It was, what video and why? Like, seriously, like, I'm like yeah. what? what, what? <laughs> and now that I look back on it, I think that I, I kind of sent something. It wasn't mm-hmm. just me being an asshole. It wasn't just the video. It was something like more, you know what I mean? Somebody wanted something more than just you posting their video you know there was a whole bunch of expectations that were coming with it yeah i me thinks i picked up on something and then this is me looking into the fact that like in my venus return chart for this year that i had around my birthday my son is in the 12th house and i'm like conjunct neptune and i'm dealing with this energy in my solar return chart of my son conjunct neptune all year which could heighten intuition, yes, but it can allow for you to be more easily deceived, too. Look, you know, there's a flip side to everything. So I'm like, am I being suspicious? If any of you think this is too much thought to give, please keep in mind I have a Virgo dominant chart. As <laughs> so I'm telling this story, I can't help it. Like, I picked the entire It cannot thing. be helped. <laughs> I automatically started breaking things down. So I'm like, well, the nicest thing that I can say to this person is, hey, well, can I see the video? Because really, I'm not just going to post the video that I haven't seen, you know? Right. (laughs) Oh, my God. She knows me so well, you guys. That's why she laughed in in advance when I started talking about my initial reaction. So I'm like, okay, well, can I see the video? And she's like, yes. Um, This is the part Mm -hmm. I'm going to struggle a little bit because I'm going to sound like such an asshole. There's no simple way to say it. The video was not funny. I won't even get into details about what it was about, but it was not funny. You can see where they were going and how maybe they thought it was funny, but it was just like, it's like, okay, the event in and of itself was like, haha, but the delivery was just not there. There was no yes. like comedic intelligence no like it was it it was not set up appropriately at all yeah it wasn't like definitely not for like you know a viral a a viral video you know what i mean like (laughs) there there was just yeah no i had too many questions Mm -hmm. i i didn't laugh and i'm just like now i feel awkward okay so this is telling you all the motions this is putting me through and me yeah. dealing with it in my own energetic way. To other people, this might not have been experienced this way. <laughs> you know? Yep. And I realized that. But I'm like, okay, this isn't funny. And I was like, I don't want to hurt her feelings. I don't know how to respond. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a lot of other things going on too. Like I said, I'm in school for web development and it's a lot that I have to focus on. And I had just recently been thinking of the fact that I need to pay attention to my shit. And I'm the type of person that people are calling on for something all the time. Like, Uh be it people I know or don't know. Like, for for readings, whatever. I just, and I'm used to that. My son's in the sixth house. I want to be helpful. But I need to concentrate on me. This is a reason that I just had. So I'm not taking this well. So here's that power play coming in, you know, creeping in at first, just in my mind. Like, why does everybody want something from me? 
Yes. You know, can like, no. So I'm like, okay, I'm just not going to deal with this right now because I need to be concentrating on what I need to concentrate on. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to take it back to pre-K. If you don't have nothing nice to say. Don't say it at all. Right. So then I start telling the Renaissance mystic (laughs) about what happened (laughs) and what pops up in my phone. The person that sends me this video goes, what do you think? And I lose my shit. Not lose my shit like, you know, I flip up on on her or anything. I'm just like, oh, really? See, I'm going to take the advice of you don't have anything nice to say. Don't say anything at all, but you want to know what I think. Fuck. Fuck. You're going to force an answer out of me. Right, right. You're going to, because you're so, you're, you're seeking for something you know, without being very direct about what it is, you know, because it, it, you know, to a degree that is manipulation because she could have just said, hey, you know, I noticed you have like a lot of people following you and like, I would really like my video to sort of reach a lot of people. Like you could at least say that, you know, like that was the intended purpose was to reach your 60 something thousand followers or whatever you have I don't know you probably have at, at this point it's at 78,000 78,000 that is a rather large following okay so it's like at if you're going to you know ask somebody to do something at least be honest about what it is so it was a very like subtle manipulation it wasn't like an outward like oh I'm gonna fuck you over kind of thing but that that's what Pluto is going to show you. It's going to show you subtle manipulations, overt mm-hmm. manipulations. Yep. You're going to be more finely tuned. And I am very finely tuned. I know when somebody is trying to bullshit me and when they're not. Like, right. and, and you almost do feel like you're being super judgmental. You're like, am I thinking too hard about this? Or like, am I, you know, but energy doesn't lie. You know what <laughs> exactly. I mean? And it's not my instinct to be, um, you know, to not be trustworthy, uh, like untrusting of people. Right. I'm actually a very, very good judge of character and I am very trustworthy and I naturally believe that I can trust people, you know, but I I don't want to call myself naive because I feel like I know when something just isn't right. Yeah. Like, and because you're like that, that's exactly the reason why I was like, Hey, am I the asshole here? <laughs> like, like, yeah. I was I, like, no, she couldn't leave well enough alone, and now you have no choice but to be truthful about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the Shit. fact that I even got like a small like <laughs> face of angina for a minute, like, oh lord, <laughs> no, no, don't, don't make me be mean. Like the fact that that even happened and the fact that I wanted to check myself to make sure I wasn't overusing like my Pluto because here's the here's the thing if I was all conceited and stuck up about all my damn followers which I'm not I'm grateful like first of all I ain't never expect this I have like I made a Facebook page because I figured I have a podcast and you need to have a Facebook page and plus I do things so I need to have a Facebook page and it's just like grown yeah organically so i'm like okay it's not like i'm sitting over here sitting on my followers like Mm-mm, bitch Mm-mm. you think yep. you're gonna come over here and have your way with my followers and you my audience so it's not really it wasn't really like that it was more so like i just i genuinely do not think this is funny yeah i don't i don't and if it was and it also it was it was not really not that I don't talk about the subject matter that she was talking about, but it did not fit in with anything that was going on. I post, you know, astrology things, random spiritual reminders, things to help you with your emotional health, all those different types of things, jokes, like, but it's, it just, it didn't, it wasn't funny and it didn't fit. Yes. <laughs> it re- I, I mean, I watched it. I, you know. I showed it to her. Yep. <laughs> I, I really, I immediately saw what the, you know, hesitation was about. And, and I, I just didn't find it to be funny. And honestly, everything makes me laugh. So like, if that, <laughs> if that doesn't make me laugh, then like, that's just not funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like we- <laughs> uh uh-uh. Sorry. So because she asked, now I'm like, okay, I have to answer her. So I'm like, I have to put on my customer service hat right now and deliver (laughs) 
not so good news, but not in a rude way. So I simply said, I didn't really think the video was that funny or relevant to what I usually post on the page. And I left it at that. And then I cringed when I hit send because I'm like, this gonna hurt this girl's feelings. But then at the same time, I'm thinking to myself, well, I mean, you really just wanted to go viral. You wanted me to help you go viral. And there's really nothing bad about that innately, but like no. you can say, you can say that. Yeah. I still wouldn't have posted that unfunny video, but at least I wouldn't think you was like trying to use me and manipulate me, which are, what did we say? Pluto keywords. Manipulation. Abuse. Did I, I have we- domination here? Because that is a really good word as well. It's not on there, but Do I think it fits. Domination? Right? I think it is, it Damn. is. Wow, this is mm, violent, volcanic. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fanaticism. Yes, yes. Subversive. Higher octave of Mars. Yeah. Well, you know. So I mean, <laughs> again, Scorpio coming in there. Mars, yes. Pluto, Scorpio. Yes. Subversion is here. So there's a lot of things that'll go on under the surface. Pluto has to do mm-hmm. what's happening on the, under the surface. And because it's retrograde right now and it's causing people to purge, mm-hmm. you're starting to see what's under the surface with people. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're starting to pick up on it too. So that's what I attribute this to. So that was like, that was one of the first sips of Pluto tea taken. Because yeah. I was picking And it was up. a very intuitive experience too, because you're just yes. like this, why do I, f- I feel so wrong for this, but like, your values were being challenged, you know? Yes. yes. And it's like, you know, it, it it wasn't enough that like, you know, she asked you to do something, but then she had to like force it and, you know, <laughs> create an uncomfortable experience for everybody involved. I yeah. was I was embarrassed, like, you know, <laughs> empathetically for her. Like, oh man, this isn't funny. Like yeah. I, <laughs> like I see where you're going, but like it just wasn't that funny. Like you can put that big that filter on that makes your eyes and mouth really big, and like any you know, usually that's funny, but the content has to be right too. Like that's just a funny filter. Like everything has to flow, and it didn't. And I feel like I should add this part so that they have understanding. It was weed related, and I love weed. Like let me not act like I don't. I really do. I found it useful. I, do you want to know that I did not pick that up in the video at all? I did not realize that there was any marijuana related content in it. <laughs> so something was not <laughs> translating properly. <laughs> now, I only knew that it was weed related because of like her message saying, this, you know, it happened to her. And then she was just saying, you know, things not to do, I guess, when you're high. And unfortunately, after I saw the video, I'm like, if you think this is funny, you must be high now because this is not funny. And, <laughs> and what I what I learned though, like when you were saying it was a very intuitive experience, did you see how yes. quickly I was willing to just point the finger inward to figure out if I'm being a dick? Yes. Or yes. if, you know, mm-hmm. I'm literally so You checked yourself. Something. You checked yeah. yourself. And you know, that is also something else that people people have to be willing to do that you know that their egos are willing to like throw down like really throw down just to not take responsibility or accountability and that is that is just going to be a futile effort loved (laughs) ones okay that is just going it is futile it is it's serving you no purpose only doing you more harm than good you know yeah Uh, so it's just you know, I'm like, damn, we're only a day in. And then I'm seeing stuff happen <laughs> online. And then people, I know we're telling me stuff. And all of the themes were all power plays. Yes. All of them. Yes. All of them. With yep. undercurrents of manipulation and subversion. And domination. Yes. You being able to see or pick up on hidden motives that people don't speak on. But because yep. of the energy that we're under right now, they're purging without realizing it. Yes. And then Which, what are, what are they like, purging? <laughs> um, well, it could be addictions. 
Um, I think we're going to... I personally believe that we are undergoing a a sexual revolution. Like, there are little ripples being thrown out into the collective as we speak. Mm -hmm. And there are people who are redefining sexual energy and how they will accept it and how they won't. And I believe that that is maybe not something that most people would think of. I think I think it would anyway. I I think it's fitting. Yeah, years ago it started with the Me Too movement. And that Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And that was about... I had been working on my own sexual trauma with the energies collectively of pedophilia and incest energy and sexual abuse Mm -hmm. three years prior to Me Too coming out. So I was uh, I, I was already doing this work and fine tuning myself to that undercurrent of the energy. What is that energy? What is what is it? You know what I mean? What yes. is what are all of these taboo um, experiences? What is the energetic signature of of this thing? And I believe that a lot of us are being shown that you know we can make excuses for the things that we subject ourselves to but at the same time like what are you really feeding your potent sexual energy to what what are you empowering is that something that you would like to empower is that something that should be empowering especially since i know pornhub was going through um some legal legal yeah. stuff yeah. with a lot of sex trafficking victims and yes. you know pedophilia and sex you know sex rings and stuff like that so like you don't know what you're consuming and what you're giving your sexual energy to and for some people this will no longer be something they wish to give themselves over to so et- people are really going to struggle with their baser instincts i believe they're struggling with the structure of what their their behavior has been to with it being a capricorn and then remember absolutely Remember what I told you? I've been saying for months, when Saturn goes into Aquarius, you want to see who doesn't have control of their, like, their impulsivity. Yep. They're just get up and, like, like you're going to see who can't, who can't control themselves. It's going mm-hmm. to be so potent. So it's, it's coming up because Pluto definitely deals with sex and taboos and things that people don't talk about, deeper psychological things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going on under the surface. So yep this is prime time for it to just be coming out and you'll see it coming out of people and you didn't even call it that's what I wanted to point out like you yes. didn't even try to wrangle that in there you did nothing really to like I guess on a conscious level to provoke it but something people can't help themselves it's going to be like energetic Freudian slips like that mm-hmm. it's just it's going to come out one way or another and if you're not willing to look in the mirror and be like, where the fuck did that come from? Or like, if you're not self-aware enough to like be able to, to look at your actions or your thought forms and be like, what the hell was that about? Some people just really stand by their garbage. Like they yep. really stand by their theirs. garbage because yep. it's theirs, right? <laughs> and it's like, honey, you can stand by that heaping pile of trash all you want but at the end of the day it's still trash yeah so it's ma'am. like mm, you are an energetic landfill you you're just disgusting rancid behavior that you just make every fucking excuse for and, and we just this is what's not going to be tolerated anymore yep yep Especially you know. Pluto and Capricorn because it wants to tidy things up. Yes, we, we yes. pulled up some Capricorn um, keywords too. So there's it's it's interesting how different things will fit to it, and then different things will be like, hmm, I wonder how that fits. Like first yeah. of all, the narrow mindedness. Capricorn has a <laughs> That was the first one I read too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 you can see what people are focused on. Yes. Even if it's not something they should be or that they've been at, like if they've been pretending like it's not something they're focused on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you happen to be online and like somebody just like pops off for no reason, you'd be like, damn, that's what's on your mind? Oh, that had to come up, hey? Yeah, I wasn't even talking mm. about that. Mm-hmm. PC, what you was focusing on. 
I'm you will definitely see people's projections. Like you, uh, I I do have to say that while I believe that everyone is a mirror of one another, you know, that also means that they're a mirror of one another. Like let that sink in because we tend to think <laughs> that when people talk to a mirror that it's one-sided. No, as it if ain't. just looking, it's not one-sided. Mirror, mirror image theory or whatever the hell you want to call it, um, it really is, you are showing someone something about themselves and also something that is not pertaining to them, but they perhaps maybe believe mm-hmm. is a part of who they are. And you are also showing them who they are and vice versa. Yes. They are showing you what you're not because perhaps maybe you believe you are this thing and they have to show you that you're not. So they do the things that you believe or do subconsciously, consciously, and you get to identify yourself and say, no, this is not who I am. And then they also reflect who you are at the same time. So it, I, I want people to begin to use that term like responsibly Yes. Because it is also one of those words, like, you know, the most overused words, you know, like, yeah. like those, um, that is something that is really, uh, one of those overused phrases or, or whatever. Oh, oh I'm sure. just, I'm a mirror. I'm a mirror. Or you're, you're, you're just projecting your, pro- no, honey, it goes both ways. Yes. The mirror works both ways. And I don't know why people don't understand this. And and here's, here's the interesting, interesting thing about this to me. So if we're saying people's like undercurrents are going to start rising to the top or being purged, Mm -hmm. which means they're going to come flying out for some people, some people it'll just bubble over, but the other people is just going to fly right on out. Like, hello, how did you not know I was here (laughs) before? Like I'm here. The thing about it is, it's more than likely just something about you, especially if it's occurring with strangers, yeah. that is mirroring back to that person yeah. what they don't like or what they need to purge. And then at the same time, if you're picking up on it, you're mirroring things, they're mirroring things to you that go that say to you, ooh, I don't like that, I don't wanna be that way. So yeah. you can take it as a lesson. Like, I mean, it's easy to be like, yeah, that's fucked up that that person, <laughs> did a b or c or d but to really take it in the two-way reflection of the mirror like people are mirroring back to each other it's not just one-sided you can really like look at it from the perspective that like you know what that's a reminder not to be that way i'm gonna watch myself you know what i mean you know i i see so many people using it and they're like well honey mirror and mirror theory or mirror image like mirror images and i'm like ah but you're like you're taking yourself out of the equation, though. Like, yep, that is you're not. You're missing a step. <laughs> you're totally missing a fucking step. And I'm like, this is, uh, this is ridiculous. Like, this is so ridiculous. And it's like you're making it harder on yourself. If you absolutely refuse to admit that you are something, and you have resistance to admitting you are something, then you are probably that thing. Mm-hmm. Even, even, yes. even like one percent of energy even if it's not a lot like my friend always says this she's like if something even one percent lives inside of me it lives inside of me yeah so it like, doesn't have to be a lot of it it's still there it's still there right so she's like if i refuse to say that i'm x y and z then it probably because i am x y and z you know what i mean yeah. whatever that means if that means that you keep looking at somebody else like an asshole, but you yourself are an asshole, you know, maybe not to the same degree as the other person, but it doesn't matter. Like You still picked up on asshole energy. Right, right. You still picked up on asshole energy. And, you know, these are just like easy examples. I mean, we don't have time, nor nor I really don't have the memory bank to <laughs> on on command talk about like other bigger things. But like, yeah, these are just smaller smaller um examples of that that energy you're recognizing this energy when you're picking up on it and like i say if i'm walking down the street and i recognize somebody what does that mean i've seen them before i cannot recognize that which is not familiar so if you pick up on anger you you are in tune in some aspect or have been or realize your capacity for anger doesn't have to necessarily be at the same level as the other person but you can pick up on it 
It's so simple. We make things so fucking complicated. Yeah, I most certainly pick up on anger and I believe that I I find every way possible to be sort of like diplomatic in my approaches and to not make things harder emotionally than they have to be, you know, like to to emote smarter, not harder. Um, but in, in doing that, there's an intellectualization that I'm doing to like my feelings and I don't allow them all to like come up as ne- as needed. Mm-hmm. And, and I noticed that like, I am very easily attuned to the energy of anger. Like I used to feel before my parents would come home from work, like if somebody was mad, I would already know before they even walk through the door, like on their way home, as they're thinking about coming home, I would get like anxious and I'd be like, oh my God, I gotta do something. You know, yeah. like I, ha- I have to do something to make them happy because they're gonna come home and they're gonna be mad. Lo and behold, they came home and they were upset, you know? Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> um, I am finally tuned to the energy of anger because I think I store a lot bit more of it than, <laughs> than I would like to admit, but but that's that's the facts that is that is what i do that is honesty for me you know yeah we need to be honest with ourselves yes some people want to think especially if they've been on a spiritual journey for a while that the the shit just goes away and you're just perfect like that's not how it works oh my god one time (laughs) i did a reading for somebody and oh my god she she i was just like listen, don't rest on your laurels. Like you have more to achieve. You have more to heal. And she was just like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I feel like you, your energy has become complacent. Like you are not willing to move past this point because you see it as the height of height. Somewhere inside of you, you believe that you know the most you can. Well, that's not, that's true to a degree. Like you know the most that you can in the moment, but that doesn't mean that there's not more to learn or more to process. And she was just like so upset that I wasn't like, oh my God, you're like the next Jesus Christ. Like <laughs> <laughs> there was just this fucking complete and total resistance to being like, I'm not perfect. Like I'm not like the most intuitive person you've ever met. Like I'm not like, honey, it's, I did all my healing work. Uh, What do you mean? Yes. That that it ain't over. And the Mm -hmm. fact, I never even look at it as when I get to the end. It'll never be. Yes, it'll. I don't even look at it that way. I just know how to deal with stuff better. It's like the white stag in a lot of like mythology. The white stag is something that you come close to, but you never quite grasp, you know? Yeah. So one could say that, you know, that's, that's about reaching enlightenment and divinity and and purity and I think you know purification is also something that Scorpio related to um and I think that again like Scorpios have the the capacity as well as Aquarians I feel like their energy can be very pure their energy can be super super pure and they have this just like cleansing or nurturing quality to them that I don't I don't know how to Explain. I think it's the objectivity, I guess, because yes. um, they're very humanitarian, but they take the feeling yes. out. So it's more like, it, it's more like, okay, well, what's best for everyone in this situation? I'm thinking with a clear head, not emotionally. You yes. Know? Yes. Which we Where are- Scorpio is very emotional. So they, you know, they have the same sort of effect, just different process, you know, like different processes, I guess. It's working um, along the lines of kind of like, looking at it from the extent of okay well I could feel the change and revolution and things need to happen uh-huh. as Pluto does want to destroy and rebuild the you know ruling planet of Scorpio but then the ruling planet of Aquarius is Uranus and that's about sudden change yep the revolution will not be slow <laughs> with Aquarius no <laughs> it, it wants to it wants to <laughs> go now it has a sense of urgency and you know Uranus is like the higher vibration of Mercury so that's ideas uh-huh. Um, ideas for the collective and things like that and speaking of the collective I forgot I wanted to mention this too you guys do realize like a lot of things are going to be going on and changing Um, Uh I was just going to remind people the retrograde's coming but also and I don't know how I forgot this because this is coming like 
in what three days uh oh yep um the nodes of the moon are going to switch signs i am excited for that i am too i am too i really am i don't know why i'm excited for that but i'm excited for that so just so people understand first of all the natural motion that the nodes of the moon are calculated at is a retrograde motion so like you you know how like okay i would tell you saturn was in capricorn so then when Mm -hmm. it's when it's done being in capricorn it's going to the next sign right yes But, but for the nodes of the moon they naturally move backwards so right now the north node is in cancer the south node is in capricorn but the north node is going to move to gemini and the south node is going to move to sagittarius so (laughs) we're going from receptive energies because um you've got water and earth signs being receptive Mm -hmm. so you know they absorb and respond to things instead of you know, necessarily being as initiating, initiating, even though Capricorn does have an initiating quality and so does Cancer because they're cardinal signs. So, you know, they're willing to get things going, but they're still more receptive in their approach. You know, they can take what they have and make something happen with it, which is why Cancers are nurturers and, you know, pretty much what mothering is, you know? You bring a woman sperm, a baby will grow, okay? Yep. In, in olden times when we were just handling babies and men was out hunting you bring us what you hunted we make you dinner like do you understand the reception yeah. and then something happens and then with Capricorn Capricorn is the boss and the manager of these, the Zodiac so what it wants to do is have things run efficiently now the nodes of the moon of course have something to do with the past and the future the south node is associated with old energy in your natal chart, your south node is energy that you have gotten really accustomed to because you lived other lifetimes, you know, in that energy. And then the south, um, north node would represent what energy you're trying to strive to now, you know, like what your purpose is. But when we look at it on a collective level, everybody has just been searching for or trying to find, get in, in, in contact with their sense of home, the north node in Yeah. Their sense of comfort. Um, Cancer energy would also represent your immediate surroundings, your emotions. You know, where where was all that comfortable? Everybody was kind of dealing with that and being called towards it. And now the energy is shifting. And this goes from May 6th through January 18th of 2022. So it's like a wow. Yeah, it's a longer transit. For anybody thinking about it, um, just to give you some insight into the importance of the transit, you usually have the North Node and the South Node return to where they were when you were born, roughly every 18 years. So when you're 18 and the North and the South Nodes go back to the spaces that they were in when you were born, it's like you're getting a reminder of what your purpose is. You're getting, like, the universe is going, hey, nudging you. Remember, you're here to do this. You're here to do this North Node stuff. And the thing about the North Node and South Node is they work in tandem. They're always opposite signs. So if, for instance, um, your South Node is in a planet that you have other planets in, this, that energy will feel real easy to you. But you mm-hmm. the risk of never meeting the North Node purpose because you're falling back on the old energy. So... When you look at the importance, like when I don't, I don't know. You can probably search around when you had your first um, nodal return. Mine was at eighteen. I was in college. College. Oh my god, that makes it sound <laughs> I don't deserve exactly what I was about to talk about. <laughs> I was in college on a scholarship. That's what was happening. I was thinking college, <laughs> scholarship together, which is college. <laughs> I guess I never thought about it that way before. But um, I was in college on a scholarship and I was also doing music. And I got an opportunity where I could do music full time and really try to pursue like my dreams as a rapper. I've been rapping since I was 12. I've been in different groups. I've recorded different songs. So I had to walk, I walked, decided to walk away from my scholarship to do music even though I became disheartened by the freaking music industry. But that's a whole other story. Like, 
my north node is in Leo at 29 degrees, right on Regulus. I'm here supposed to stand out, but what would happen when I was rapping all the time? I kept falling back on my south node, which is in Aquarius, which is be part of the group, help everybody. People always wanted me to be in groups and stuff, but that wasn't what I was here for. I was here to stand out. <laughs> so yep. the universe was reminding me, like, stop, stop doing, you know, what you think needs to be done to help other people. That included like people's expectations of me when I went to college and everything. I was here to do what I wanted to do, to have fun. And the universe kicked me in my ass with my North Node return to remind me of that. So everybody should kind of think about like when you were around 18, what was going on for you? You can even if you want to look up your your um, return and see when it is. Let me see. Do, while I'm looking yours up, let's see. Do you remember anything off the top of your head that you feel was significant to that? Yeah. Um, mm, well, for me, I feel like I'm already going through a bit of a hardship because the north and south nodes are, are opposite for me. So I have a cancer south node and a mm-hmm. Capricorn north node. So I already feel like an opposition. Like there's just, there, while that is, like it is a good thing. And I definitely feel myself like, beginning to need to embody the Capricorn energy more you know Mm -hmm. like being meticulous and practical let's talk about these keywords right so practical organized orderly you know being ambitious and coming from a place of authority but like you know also doing it out of love not out of fear you know because Capricorns are notorious for like stepping on people to get what they want and then that is scarcity mindset. That is that is fear based. So that is not real achieved success because you didn't do it from a place of love. You did it from a place of fear. And what isn't built on a solid foundation will come down. Amen. You know. So yeah. I know. I know. I have been um, trying because Capricorn energy is very very different from how I experience life you know it is it is not a an energy that I feel really comes natural to me um I mean you know of course I want to be like let's see what else they have here prudent reliable respectable you know I would I I definitely feel like I could be better at being like reliable for things you know I got you Um, yeah but I'm I'm interested to see how things sort of shift um, because I, what is it? What, what's the North Node going to be? Gemini? Yep. Yeah, I have a lot of, um, I don't really know how it relates, but I have a lot of planets in Gemini's house. So I just feel like there could be like an ease of energy there and also like more restriction. There's, there's a couple different ways you could look at it. I just put your, um... I, I just figured out your your last lunar return was February 3rd, 2010. Damn. 2010, man. That was the year after I the year after I graduated high school and that was probably just around my grandmother's birthday. My grandmother had died like the the summer of this fall of 09. Mm -hmm. So by that point, a few months later, then I had my, my nodal return and my mom was going through like really, really deep depression. And I, I think that's like when my relationship to like my, my mom sort of like started to change and I, I began seeing her a bit differently. So that makes a lot of sense. Especially because your south node was in Cancer and it was being activated. And Cancer energy very much has to do with mother. And then yes. the south node has to do with karma. And yes. then your north node is in Capricorn in your third house. Yes. So a lot of what I see just in general for you, it's almost like having an honorary... Um, north node in gemini because you have it in your third house yeah right like isn't that i maybe that's why i feel so positively about it i'm just like i feel like innately it's something i need and i can't 
put my finger on it why but I just feel like it's something that's going to be good it's 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 going to activate Gemini themes. So, you know, Gen- Gemini's mutable air, which is changeable thought, being open uh-huh. to different ideas, sharing different ideas and information. So your information house is the seat of where it's your gonna trust be lies. Yeah, and it's, it's like, hey, okay, well, I get it. I, I have to remain open to these things. Um, and not only open to things, but you have to also look at the South Node to figure out how not to be. <laughs> yeah, so, which is Sa- it's Sagittarius, right? Let me tell you, yes. <laughs> and don't be like that. Just like the entire time that the North Node's been in Cancer, yeah. um, the past that was showing up was Capricorn. So don't be yeah, too rigid, emotionless. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? You have to open yourself up. That's what that was about. And now mm-hmm. it's like... Right. Be open to many ideas instead of getting on your soapbox and seeking your singular truth. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, when I think of cancer energy, I I find that most cancers have very, have a lot of difficulty pinning down where their traumas, you know, exist. Uh, At least for cancer sons. I don't know, you know, there could be other placements that allow you to sort of see things for what it is, but in my experiences with cancers, they are, they are not free flowing and, 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 you know, like very nurturing. Um, that hasn't been my experience. Oh, I feel bad. I know some amazing cancer signs, but yes, but I look at it like, see the entirety of their chart makes a difference. Like I know, I know, but people like, they also don't think about the fact that like, Everybody, like, I know we're really tied to our sun signs, and it's not that I'm trying to say that they're not important, but I think how you view sun signs is like... But that's not the all of the everything, you know? It, it isn't, but, like, there's a specific thing that it is, like, you yes. know what I mean? And what it is, is it's like an experience you're continually drawn to. Like, uh-huh. if you're a cancer son, you came here to have a cancer experience. But how you handle having that cancer experience is based on other parts of your chart. You know what I mean? Just like I was talking earlier, I came here to have a Pisces experience, but I got that message and I didn't respond like innately Piscean. My moon was like, uh, Uh, control, power, what do you want? Yes, (laughs) yes. Who sent you? (laughs) Absolutely, yeah. (laughs) Who sent you? (laughs) Yeah. what is this stupid shit? Like, honestly, like, exactly. <laughs> does Capricorn not look down his nose like, you're just stupid. What is that? Yes. Oh, my God. Cut that out. Cut that out. What are you doing? <laughs> so you oh can see God. that even though I'm here to have a Pisces experience, so I am constantly drawn to, like, understanding that everybody is connected. I do. I say this all the time, and I know it sounds weird to people. I love everybody, but I do not like everybody. Yep. That, that's my Pisces influence. Like, I legitimately recognize the humanity in everybody, but yes. I don't like everybody. Yes. I'm I sorry. Think, I think innately I feel that way too. That kind of goes back to me saying that like, I genuinely trust most people, you know? It's like, when I don't trust you, there's a, a goddamn good reason, you know? Right. Like, even if, even if it's just because you activate, like, a subconscious fear of mine or whatever, like, this is what I mean by, like, looking at yourself objectively, like, and that can be sometimes hard for me to do. Sometimes I get really overwhelmed by my emotions, and this is why I say, like, cancers have difficulty, not because they choose to be difficult, because it's hard to be a cancer. Yeah, it is. Listen. You know? You're leading with your intuition and your emotions. You're drawn mm-hmm. to an experience that is wholly emotional. And mm-hmm. you may encounter people who aren't doing so well with emotions. And, and never because- forget, water is is shaped, the, the the quality of water is shaped by its, its environment. It's, yeah, and its container. Um, yeah. Right. So if a cancer did not grow up in a house where uh, intuition and emotions were, you know, like, checked regularly yeah. and, and you know it, like you didn't get to fine tune those skills like you know what I mean you yeah. didn't get to do that you didn't you didn't get to you didn't learn that's not a baser skill like an easy a mundane skill for you it becomes something that you have to learn over time and I find that 
you know, I have a lot of cancer energy in, in my chart. So I'm like, damn, like I can see how that weighs me down, let alone that be my sun sign where like that's part of my ego too. Like I can't, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't want to be a cancer sun, but I appreciate the energy. It's just, you yeah. know, it's the ego that gets filtered through that can sometimes be like, really you see everything that happens outside of you but you don't see how you have anything to do with that like yeah. I just mm-hmm. like if you were a cancer that had a lot of fire in your chart mm-hmm. <laughs> what does fire do to water or how do they interact we could say fire boils water or water puts out fire yeah mm-hmm. does that sound fun mm-hmm. on your, your route to having a nurse fire is my se- I, fire is my secondary element I think See, like that I is mostly, the one I lack. <laughs> I lack. I <sighs> lack. 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 Yes. I, I do not have that. I am. I am all earth and and, a, and some and some water here and there, like hard mud. Hard mud. Yes. This is hard. Hard mud. mud. <laughs> I'm hard as mud. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of earth energy, and then I realize in my dealings with other people, this is something that's come up for me. Pluto retrograde. I have to realize because I have all that earth energy, especially all that Virgo energy that's checking everything down the brass tacks. I don't yeah. understand when people don't make like grounded decisions and they like fly by the seat of their pants. I'm like, I have to say, that? I will, I have to say that I am the same way. Like, why did like, you do that? <laughs> I do not like people who are just like, Hey, let's go do this. It's like, it is six o'clock at night. Like, you could have told me at three o'clock or, or like, I don't know, the day before or something. So like, I, maybe I'm a bit too rigid and, and I need a lot of forewarning because you can't just spring things on me. You can't spring shit on a Taurus. You can't spring shit on me. I need preparation. I need to like mentally prepare myself to have to deal with other people and not because they irk me but because <laughs> because I'm just going to see everything once I leave the house I'm going yes. to see everything experience and, every essence yes. of it in every way possible That's and it's a name. sensory experience so yes. it's like if there's too many people in a place it's like wow like it's, it's really nice here but holy shit like I can't hear myself all think. this energy like, yeah all this energy it was too much I feel the same it is, way mm, mm-hmm which is why I'm always like, why am I, why am I hard on myself for the fact that I know that it takes a lot of energy out of me to socialize? <laughs> like it really does. Why and- is there like a built-in guilt complex for that? You know, like why are we bred and made to feel guilty? Like, and then no. I chose this nutty chart where, <laughs> yeah. where they're like, okay, I don't, I don't like necessarily like people with the Capricorn moon, Pisces is like, but well, we're all connected. Don't uh-huh. you see? But it means and Capricorn is like, you have to serve some sort of purpose, you know, because like, but if you don't. like it, but it needs to. And then Libra yeah. Rising is like, hey, I'm Come on, everybody. People. How did I pick a lifetime where I wouldn't want to be around people, but I'm good with them? That <laughs> is exactly what has happened. Ah, uh, this is why I the, say know y'all charts so you can see the little idiosyncrasies. It's funny because like I'm I'm a Taurus and I love being around people on my terms. Like, um, there's that if fix. I'm familiar with you, yeah, yep. yeah. If I'm familiar with you, no new friends, no new friends, no change. Like, <laughs> no, which is actually really funny because I make new friends so easily. Like, I just. You also have a cardinal cross. But yes. I'm just saying, in general, it's still like Yes. I have I have some standards here. Like Yes, yes, yes. And and I tend to I tend to meet people who show me um where I still don't have discernment. <laughs> Which not is not a bad thing per se. It's just like, oh wow, I definitely didn't pick up on that. Like <laughs> Okay, like like the rest is pretty good. Like we're you're, for the most part we're okay here. This one little thing, all right, I can overlook it. Like it, it's it's fine, it's fine. Not everybody's perfect. 
people don't say this enough, or maybe they do, and I just really haven't heard it, but tourists, they have high standards. Like, Very. we do have bougie standards. Yeah, y'all want money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and um, for thousands and thousands of years, people have prided themselves on being better than other people because they because have of their access money. to the, yeah. right, because of their money. I they feel like that's also, mm -hmm. and that's also something that Pluto is probably going to deflate in people. I have Pluto in my second house, right? Yes. In your money yes. house, in the top yes. house. In yes. my money house. So the way I define like success and prosperity is probably going to continuously shift. Um, and like any issues surrounding money, which like for, for all of my life, money has burned a hole in my pocket. If I have money, I'm doing something with it. And I still haven't properly reined that in yet. So it's like, I definitely still spend quite a bit of money, but I always feel like I'm like, helping like you know supporting my friend's business or like you know whatever that, i just i justify it i just and then with it. that placement i mean that fluctuations in money death and rebirth mm -hmm. and money issues it could mm -hmm. all die out and then all of a sudden it's regenerated in some way yeah that is definitely a theme yep absolutely ebbs and flows mm -hmm. it definitely yeah like that's that's what happens like when i was talking about like we're all, like look at where pluto is like transiting your charts I now. I think Pluto is in my fourth um, house now. Yeah, I'm sick of Pluto being in my fourth house. Now, even though we're both Libra Risings, I'm a 11 degree Libra Rising and she's a 19 degree Libra Rising. Mm -hmm. Pluto has been transiting um, my fourth house for years and I can't wait till it leaves because I keep moving. Mm -hmm. I keep like literally, I, Pluto will not let me plant roots. Yeah. Pluto is like, oh, you moved? Don't get too comfortable because we're going to do this again. Oh, and I think moved. it's like you're we're going to do it again until you found the right environment. And that won't be until Pluto is in Aquarius, but actually, not even right when it goes into Aquarius, because Pluto will still be in the fourth house. Because there's some Aquarius in my fourth house. So I'm just like, ah. Oh. But then when it moves to my fifth, whole new expression. Then it's, it's you know, going to be impacting and isn't it funny my self-expression. Like, isn't it funny how how long has Pluto been in, the four, in, in your fourth house? Well, I know Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008. And, well, damn. Okay, but, so... But it, was, it started in my third. So that means... When it got to 13 degrees of, of um, Capricorn, it was in my fourth house. But before that, it was in my third. And if I look back at 2008, yeah, there was transformation coming to me speaking my mind. And yeah. then Pluto was on my moon when it first went into Capricorn because I'm a three degree Capricorn moon. Oh. And this all was going on like right after my Saturn return. Mm. So it's like I was, I got the... I got the influence of the Saturn return, which completely like, like restructured me, like yes, everything yes. I thought. And then after that, get Pluto on my moon. I really want to give up. I had to do the most of the shit that was out of what just happened to me in my, in oh, my, uh, just got muffled. Oh, can you hear me now? There you go. You're good. Okay. Now. I was like, oh, you just want to bring up all the emotions that came about after my Saturn because of my Saturn return and like you know, how dare you but thanks yes and, but I needed it and then you know my moon's in my third house so I had to speak how I felt mm -hmm. and, and I had to be transformed to be able to feel comfortable doing that so that process began so it's like look for where Pluto is transiting your chart so that you can get an idea for how you're affected you know it's um, funny that both of us have Pluto in the fourth Mm -hmm. But what makes me laugh is that we experience it like two completely different ways. Yeah. Because, um, because so like I haven't, I've only, I'm, well, I moved twice over the last, since from 2008 when Pluto entered Capricorn until mm -hmm. now, I moved twice. Um, the both, the events were very, very separated from each other. And then after I moved, I moved back. And that was pretty quick. That was only like six months after having left. So it's then, like, 
you have planets in your fourth. I don't. You have. What the Juno, hell do I have? Oh, yeah, have, Juno and Aquarius. You have Juno I mean, um, and Saturn, Saturn. and Aquarius. <laughs> yes. So it, it's like, and the thing is, Pluto is going to eventually catch up and then make direct contact. Uh-huh. Your, you know, and before that, it was in your third house and it was touching your black moon, Lilith, at one degree, when it got to one degree, then your Uranus at 13 degrees. This was probably year. years ago, and oh, in which case made sense because it started I was, in 2008. I was very emotionally charged, and it was on your uh, and it was on your North Node. Oh, uh, it was there not too long ago, though. It was there when it was at like 20 degrees, and Pluto. Was I dated a Cancer right? during that time. What year are we talking? like 2000 well it wouldn't have been 2008 it started in 2008 this is different though because this wasn't that long ago pluto's currently at 24 degrees when i'm talking about it hitting your north node your north node's at 20 degrees 20 yeah yeah so that that okay yeah never mind that's how crazy it's wrong. but For it's me. like it's interesting how you can see what themes are going to come up so yeah like there's themes relating to home, nurturing, um, relationship with family, private life. Yep. Fourth house is private life too. There's so we're both experiencing them, but in different ways based on mm-hmm. you know different things that are essentially like you know personal to our charts. But yes. with, the, with the nodal changes I was talking about, the fact that <laughs> the fact that we're going from emotional cancer to in your head Gemini yeah and that's a that's a you know a collective thing even, even though there are people that have their north node in Gemini they're gonna have you know their north node return so they're getting a reset of energy for their purpose but if you're not having your north node return what you're looking at is collectively everybody being open to different ideas I don't mm-hmm. find this coincidental given people have already started having to come up with a lot of different ideas because of the way that we are having to live right now. Yes. Which is basically an uncertainty. Yes. So we need more information. We have to get away from the South Node in Sagittarius coming, which is about literally like standing on your soapbox. like And following a singular truth. And you know that, here's the thing, what the South Node highlights for us is not just the past, but what's been done in the past. So think of all the people that like to cling to the past. Yes. People, it, 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 this will also tell you something. If the North Node's going into Gemini, where one should probably be open to multiple ideas instead of looking for a teacher or a guru, which is Sagittarius. Yes. This is the energy of learning to think for oneself and not yes. just look for a leader. Like, I think Astro Pluto Queen that put up the other day this post that was talking about the difference between when we were in the age of Pisces and us being in the age of Aquarius. In the yes. age of Pisces, which is which was anciently ruled by Sagittarius's ruling planet, Jupiter, so they have a lot in common, um, everybody wanted somebody to tell them how to be. Yes. Rules were set. Oh my gosh, what religion am I going to be? Here's the rules of the religion. Dogma. Like, all that different thing. But now, you know, when you look at the Sagittarius aspect that's coming, all the people who are already predisposed to that are going to have a hard time letting that go if they're not careful. Yeah. Clinging, clinging to needing a guru, a teacher, a leader, you know, that tells you, oh no, your singular focus should be this, instead of opening yourself up to different ideas and also different truths. I know people get upset when they hear say, when they hear someone say, well, she was speaking her truth. They're like, there was only one, there's only one truth. What are you talking about? What I mean by this is, let's think of our interpersonal like relationships. So like, let's say we work somewhere. <laughs> mm. And I mean, when you're at work, you aren't around them people because you want to be. You yes. Just happen to work with them, right? Yes. So if you're lucky, sometimes you'll form bonds and friendships with people at work. And you're grateful. Very for lucky. Them. Yes. You can be very grateful for them because they're not a given. <laughs> like, <laughs> just because you work with people doesn't mean you're going to get along. So most people who find themselves in a happy profession or something they like doing, their environment has a lot to do with it. You know, do they get along with the people who are around them? But then 
what happens when you go to work and you got to deal with a bunch of dickheads are you happy <laughs> no is that frustrating won't like that do we <laughs> like so that becomes uncomfortable energy that we just have to deal with because okay we're at work what do you expect I, I have to put up with this I need my paycheck yep right? so when we're looking at how we operate when we're thinking about work in general you could say to one person there why don't you like working here and that answer may vary even if everybody is like has something to complain about some of the answers may collectively be the same but some of them would vary so what does that tell us well there are collective reasons for things but there's also individual truths yes like if you are so, a person who doesn't like being around people anyway it's probably murder for you to be around anybody whether you like them or not yeah no i have to agree and and i think the to drive that point home further like there is a personal truth is a narrative a perspective it means this yes. this is true for that person right. because this this is the way that they are perceiving something so this is true for them it doesn't it's not meant to con well i don't know what it's meant to do it's meant to show you something about you and also the person about them it, it simply is always a reflection of you know whoever is looking at it you know um and that that if you don't resonate with that truth and that's not your truth because you've done the work to know that that doesn't vibe with you mm -hmm. then you know and it has nothing to do with you then it's not your truth right that's well, their truth see see that is such such a jewel drop because what i notice for most people and it, it's, it's it's very heavy to me and i think the real realization of this helps us in our interpersonal relationships yes we don't realize that the lens through which people are viewing the different things that are occurring in their lives has sometimes nothing to do with i guess you could say what's actually occurring but that's too broad to say but with the reason that it's really happening we're like meaning making machines so you know one person well two different people having the same experience could have the same experience and collectively feel like oh my god you know be describing how it made them felt and it made them feel excuse me how many siblings like grow up in the same yeah yes. how many siblings grow up in the same house with one another and the two of them are just like i never knew you felt that way Ooh. and it's like what or like i used to wonder all the time i'm like how do people turn out so different when they have the same because yes. same experience different lens different perspective even yes. a different way that they may have been taught so there's no room for you to just go like well dismiss it, 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 it. yeah it's just this one thing because it just is that's stupid i'm mm -hmm. sorry like mm -hmm. no it is it's mm -hmm. stupid like personal example my sister will say, I feel like she's treated differently. And I don't feel this way because I want to feel this way. <laughs> I feel this way through observation. You are babied. Yep. I am not. But then you don't understand my point of view. And then she'll say to me, but you act like we don't have to deal with the same person. Well, we do have to deal with the same person. We have the same mom. She just doesn't treat us the same. So we're not having the same experience that's that's the difference that's key so when you look at this upcoming transit that we're going to be under the influence of until january 2020 it's important to realize the themes that can come up okay there's going to people be people who are not cool with different ideas and you're going to see it because they're going to cling to the south node they are going to want to stand on a soapbox people might get more like zealous with their religion you know what I mean? Oh, wait a minute. I think it knocked her out. I'm going to bring her back. One. My bad. Second. No problem. I was like, it knocked you out and put you in the waiting room. I'm like, she wasn't waiting. She was at game admittance. <laughs> the hell? But 
what I was saying is that's the importance of looking at this transit that we're going to be under the influence of until January 2022, because you want to connect with the themes. It'll tell you overall what will pop up. So for people who are drawn towards the singular truth, instead of being open to multiple um, ideas and perspectives, they might cling more to the South Node and Sagittarius. That's energy mm-hmm. we're supposed to be graduating from. Yes. You know, that's energy we're supposed to be leaving behind. Also, at the same time, you have to look at it like, if I'm telling y'all, look at people's charts and then like, look at some of the things I'm saying. So if you have people in your life who have more Gemini energy, in ways they're going to be called more towards the new experience of being open to it. They're already in tune with being open to ideas, you know what I mean? Processing different ideas, um, information, you know, being all over the place even. That's the bad side of Gemini. Yeah, spacey. <laughs> yeah, like too, too spacey. Flaky. Why? Yeah, because like you're not really committed to anything. You you can see so many different sides. Yeah, but, they're very like flippant. Like it's just like, yeah, they're like whatever. Like <laughs> it doesn't fit into my plans anymore. But bitch, we made plans though. Like the good part about them though is just the openness to the yes, either yes. the receptivity of information and then, then the delivering of it. Yes, yes. But then Sagittarius is like, um, um, consider what idea for what. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it's really, like, it really is like that. It really is. Like, no, that's that's not how it happens for me. And the only thing that matters is what I'm paying attention to. My brother is a Sagittarius and he has been trapped inside and he is losing his ever loving fucking mind. <laughs> and like when someone doesn't agree with him, he's just like, well, I think it's stupid. Like, it's just stupid. It's, yeah. Everything is stupid. Everybody's fucking stupid. And I'm like, bro. Listen, they don't consider, and this <laughs> this is Sagittarius energy all across the board. I mean, we all have it somewhere in our chart. So yeah, mine's I, like in my ninth house. No, you have Gemini energy in your ninth house. Gemini, it's your I do. It's, you have opposites. Oh. So oh, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Basically, for some people, okay, like if you have Sag- Sagittarius placements, I know my daughter does, and we talk about this all the time because she's a Scorpio she's a she has a sad heavy chart so people don't think she's a scorpio at first because she's so willing to be adventurous and walk up to people and be like hi and like you know you know what i mean but there's still she's a scorpio sun and rising so Uh. so it's like and then she has her son in her 12th house so people don't really see her as she is anyway so it's like kind of like a tricky energy but yeah influence she's like called to adventure so yes Think of Sagittarius like this. We already talked about Gemini, you know, when we had a talk a while ago, being like, unfortunately labeled as two-faced, but the reason people say that is because they're literally two energies looking at different things in one, you know? So yes. seeing like even conflicting sides and, you know, can somehow reconcile them. And you're like, what? You can't think that and that. The hell? So then the person just seems... Two faced, <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. or just not really like committing to anything, and you're just like, oh no, Mm-mm. there's that flakiness you were talking about. But mm-hmm. Sag is a centaur. It was an adventure. It got a big bow and arrow, and what's it doing? It's focusing in on some long, far goal. Like it's and narrow, narrow, it. narrow, narrow. Yes, narrow scope, because it got to hit that goal. So it doesn't care yes. about everything that the arrow is flying over. It misses no. all the all the Gemini shit, all the different ideas. Totally and completely. Yep, it's just narrow focus right to, oh, nope, that's what I think. So you'll notice that that's what I think energy is going to come up a lot for the people who are refusing to um, go towards the North Node in Gemini, because they're called the yes. South Node. Yep. standing on their soapbox that, so if the way that they look at life is the way that they look at life they're not considering how other people look at life or take things or that someone would have a reason to think something that they do it's just like no nah, that doesn't resonate with, with the truth my truth that's all that matters so things yes. is about to get interesting <laughs> yes it is <laughs> it just, really is people purging and then they gonna be on some dumb shit like seriously uh 
then this starts in three days with Pluto oh, already lovely. retrograde. Mm-hmm. May is a very action-packed month. Um, mm-hmm. May came not to play. <laughs> and and I, I, you know, I was sitting here earlier today and I said, you know, I can choose to be either happy or not happy about all of these big shifts taking place during my birthday month, which has not stopped me from celebrating in the in the way that I know. Oh, how. of course, of course. Right. Um, but I, Taurus is also known um, for its endurance. So I think to carry this energy, you know, this strong oxen sort of energy um, with all these really troubling, conflicting, deep, wounding sort of energies. I think I think it's a beautiful thing. I, I think Taurus is shouldering. Taurus energy is shouldering. It's cradling. It's the mantle for all of the things that we are going to experience for the next five, six, however many months. You know what I mean? Like this, it came out at this time. So, you know, at, at this point in time, in this, you know, during Taurus season, a lot of things will be coming, you know, um, the focus will be projected inward. Yeah, because Pluto retrograde started April 25th. Uh-huh. So that was during Taurus season. Yeah. Saturn retrograde is going to start on your birthday, on mm-hmm. May 11th. Mm-hmm. Then the following day, Venus goes retrograde. <laughs> Um, Jupiter goes retrograde May 14th. Mm-hmm. Don't y'all just want to know for the rest of the year so you know what you're dealing with? I'm just going to say it more. Okay? Yes. Mercury! Mercury's ass is going to go retrograde June 18th. So in Cancer. Have fun with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mercury hates being a water signs. We already had Mercury. Mercury and Pisces went on, retrograde and Pisces went on forever. It really did. It felt never ending. It really did. I was like, please get, and that's my natal Mercury. And I still was like, please leave. And then because it went retrograde, (laughs) it hit my natal Mercury three times. So I had to cast three charts for it. Oh my God. Like, it was a mess. Like it touched it, then it retrograded back over it and then it moved forward over it. And I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. So then we got Neptune retrograde June 23rd. Chiron retrograde July 11th. Oh, man. (laughs) In Aries. Ah, Okay, that's going to be fun. I can't wait till we talk about that. Uranus Mm -hmm. retrograde August 15th. And Uranus is in Taurus. And like I keep telling people, when Uranus went into Taurus, I started this podcast because, and I decided to start it on the date that Uranus went into Taurus for one reason, because I wanted to do this for a long time, but there was a part of me that was scared, and I knew I needed to be pushed out of my comfort zone. And the energy of Uranus in a fixed Earth sign like Taurus, sudden change, and I don't want to move. Perfect. <laughs> Push me right yeah. out of my comfort zone. Seriously. Yes. And if yes. you think about it, Uranus rules Aquarius and then Aquarius squares Taurus. So that already yes. tells you how that transit has a little bit of friction in it, but we need friction sometimes for movements mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. occur. So then after Uranus goes retrograde August 15th, we have Mars retrograde on September 9th. Huh. Oh God. That, that should be fun. Um, Oh, because it's going to be in Aries. Oh, oh, oh. Is Chiron oh, still going to be retrograde at that point? I didn't even look. Let me see. Let's see. Oh, that'll be tough. That'll be tough energy. So, Chiron is retrograde until December 15th. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the time Mars goes retrograde... Um, in September, yeah, the entire time Mars is retrograde, um, Chiron's also retrograde in Aries. We, Damn, we'll, um, we'll talk that'll about be that. where I'm, yeah. I, I have some predictions about that that I just feel just because we're still in the times of uncertainty and people are tired of being in the house and Mars and its ruling sign energy pushed inward while our need to heal is also pushed inward. Ooh. Mm. 
Let's, we Plus, just... that'll be hitting my moon and Mercury, so that'll that'll be fucking fun. Oh, like, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that really sounds very transformative, though. Let's just say, probably very transformative. I will probably be the snarkiest or or the most um, emotionally fired up that I will probably feel like a dragon. I will probably feel like a dragon. <laughs> you gotta uh, be careful during them transits. But oh yes. my god, yeah. And then yeah. finally, Mercury goes retrograde October 14th. So that's retrograde of 2020. And What's that going to be? What sign? Um, it Scorpio? is going to be... We need to get out of the water goddamn element already yes. with Mercury. Like, we need was, to leave this shit behind. Same thing happened last year. Remember? We had retrograde. <laughs> it was just and, all water. Yep, Mercury went retrograde, retrograde in all of the water signs last year, and it's doing it again this year. <sighs> I'm. We'll talk more about it as it gets closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm telling y'all, so basically the gist that we tried to paint here is we're dealing with uh, uh, Pluto retrograde, newly um, retrograding in Capricorn. Um, in three days, there's going to be a shift of energy from seeking a sense of home to being open to multiple ideas and, and leaving behind uh, singular truths, uh-huh. which it's going to be switching from emotions to thought. If you think about that, from emotions to thought. There's yes. a lot going on. And I said also Mercury, I'm sorry, Pluto retrograde is purging things. So think about, let's piece these things together. What do we get? Okay. <laughs> what do we get? So if if some people are going to be unsat by the thought that they have to be open to other ideas, but then some people are going to be called towards, you know, this eruption of like being open to it i definitely feel as if there's going to be a bigger sense of community on both ends of the spectrum I see which that. is which is funny because it, that's that's rather like um redundant actually like <laughs> the people who don't want to collaborate are all sort of going to like group together and like agree on not collaborating with people and like agree with other people on not agreeing with people (laughs) and then there's going to be people who want to work with one another and want to sort of create a larger sense of community where there are a lot of like um like like a collective think tank I feel like that's what I'm getting like um more people who are willing to be creative and and imaginative because you know you're gonna have Gemini's. to be. Yeah, we're gonna have to be. Like these are unprecedented times. Like we have no I mean, idea. Like businesses we, are having to restructure. And oh my god, businesses! I'm sorry. Go ahead. Say what you're saying. I'm gonna remember what. No, I'm no, no. Saying. I'm pretty much. I'm. I pretty much said like whatever it is that I need to say. So it's just like Girl. we're going to need to start working together. And then there are going to be people who don't want to work together. But mutable air, changeable <laughs> thought, okay? Change. Again, change. During a season yep. that doesn't want to change, too. So we have to take into account that, you know, we're, the sun is in Taurus, which is shining a spotlight on Taurian themes. But businesses have had to make major changes. I've been seeing all types of stuff. Like I saw this, um, this thread about... I'm getting mad. Black Twitter, like, completely came at this lady's throat. And even though, like, watching Black Twitter come at people's throats can be entertaining, I still Mm -hmm. saw a lesson I felt like other people didn't see. Mm. So so it was about, somebody had basically said, damn, like, I can't wait till this quarantine shit is over because I need to go to the beauty supply store, okay? And then a woman came in, a white woman came in and was like, well, there is this thing called online shopping and puts sallybeauty.com. Now, for those unfamiliar, because I don't want to think everybody knows this, (laughs) the person who originally commented was Black. We don't buy our stuff from Sally Beauty. Like, I've only bought, like, bobby pins and shit from Sally Beauty because I needed them in a pinch, and that was the closest thing. No. Yes. Our hair care stores cater to our hair. 
So everybody attacked this woman, right? They're like, you know, and some of the attacks were kind of funny, which I feel terrible saying that. But, <laughs> yeah. but what did my Capricorn moon think first before I even laughed at all that stuff? Guess what my Capricorn moon thought? What? Why the fuck aren't our beauty stores up to the standard where we can order from them online? Hello? Missing out oh, on yeah. business? Mm. Hello? So while everybody else is laughing, I'm like, um... So you mean to tell me, um... Y'all We're not gonna talk business. about this? Yeah, it's a whole business opportunity right here. That's how businesses get created. They fill needs. Yeah. Uh, IJS. No, no, I have to agree with you there. I really do. Because, yeah. you know, if you're... Let me tell you something. It just... It, Sally Beauty is obviously not for every... Like, it, it's perceived as, like, a an all-inclusive chain. But it is, in fact, not. Okay? Like, that's just, just simply put, you know? I don't want to... Yeah, it's not. You know, um... You would think like, oh, just hiring a website and like, there are so many people who are fucking looking for work right now. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are so many people who are looking for work right now. Like, you could easily have somebody build your GD website and like, yeah. and, you know what I mean? And like, you could have somebody upload all your inventory and and you know all this other like, you could be doing all of those things to ensure that your business still flows i mean like hell you can even sell your products on like facebook marketplace like even if you don't want to do all that yes. like you know or like- hold on <laughs> equid equid is free for up to 15 products i believe but it's 15 dollars a month to post like 100 products and it That's even lets bad. you set up a one page shop like wow. it's a temp- there's different templates it's you don't even have to know how to do anything but like fill in words and upload your pictures and stuff. I'm just saying. So like, as I was looking at that and I'm thinking about the fact that we're going into being open to different ideas because we have to be open to uh, different ideas while the mm-hmm. collective is under restriction right now. Um, yeah, that'll be big. And you're gonna see who does not want to go with the flow. You're going to see who is resistant. Remember when Toys R Us went out of business? <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't believe, oh, we don't have to worry about online shopping. That's not going to affect our business. fucking <laughs> 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 stupid. <laughs> what happened? What happened? We in the mm. age of Aquarius. Aquarius rules the internet and technology, baby. Yes. Yes, they do. Listen. Maybe it's just the way my chart is set up because I have three planets in my 11th house. And my <laughs> world is there, and my Mars and my Jupiter. I ain't gonna never be up with, never not be up with technology. I don't care. I'm not gonna be one of those old people like, I can't text my grandson back because I don't know how. Hell the fuck no. <laughs> you gotta keep learning and growing and adapting. I feel like this transit is gonna show that change, change is necessary. You have to do it. It's yep. the only constant thing. Yep. And, and those I who agree. are resistant to change are not going to fare so well. I have to agree. I really do. I have to agree. Um, I think that over the next five months, we're really going to... There's going to be such a a focus, you know, um, of inward, you know, inward, like, attention and awareness, you know? Yes. And I said businesses specifically because Saturn's in Aquarius right now, but it's going to go retrograde, too. Uh And it's going to retrograde eventually back into Capricorn, which is about Uh business, which is about structure. So... Uh Oh, pick- so they're going to have to revisit, <clears throat> you know, how can we be, be how can we be practical, mm-hmm. but at the same time, how can we be innovative? Like mm-hmm. you're going, you know, like we already got a taste of the Capricorn and Aquarius energy. We already started seeing the purging of what isn't working and and truths coming to light. You know, like w- w- 
the world literally doesn't look the same way as it not did at six all. months ago. Okay. Not at all. Like, like let's, nobody let's thought fucking it. talk about that. Let's fucking talk about that. Okay. Like the world does not look the same way that it used to. We are all just fundamentally changed. Like our, our whether or not we realize what's happening before us somewhere inside of ourselves our awareness knows that our root chakra has been thoroughly rocked okay <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> like let's not fucking pretend like there's just been a lightning bolt to our root chakra like everything we know the foundations have just been totally and completely fucking dismantled and like either you're forcing yourself to pull pieces together that don't fucking fit together anymore Mm-hmm. Or you're just like standing around looking at the mess and going, what can I create from this? Listen, ain't nothing the same. And I can't sit here to you, no matter how much I was looking into the astrology of this year, before this year started, I still, I don't, I don't think I thought this. <laughs> Listen, uh, listen, I get it because, you know, we try not to be so fatalistic when I think everybody tries not to be so fatalistic when they're doing readings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's it's really funny because I, I think you can recall, I think I did them at the, um, you know, the, the event that we did in, when was that? March? Fe- was well, that March? February? March. It was the last day of leap year, February. Okay, yeah. So it was almost March. And during the event, um, I had used my charm casting set. And I kept pulling, not only during that event, but for months prior, I kept pulling the charm that kind of looks like a, it kind of looks like a plague mask, but I think it's like a crow skull or some, some sort of bird oh okay okay but it's but it's it's like adorned with flowers on it so it looks very ceremonial so it doesn't look too much not exactly like a plague mask but very much like it (laughs) and I I couldn't help but remember like as this sort of thing came out and I kept hearing about how the astrology of the time is still a lot of it there were certain transits that were just like when the uh, black plague occurred I couldn't help but like snicker to myself a little bit and be like, (laughs) you've been pulling this charm for months now. Like I bet you weren't willing or daring to believe that there was going to be some sort of plague. You know, we- we, Yes, I wish I would have had my mask in November. Right, I'm telling you, right? Like I'm for real, so And like a real one, like one of the real effective ones. And And they, you know, they used to put herbs in in the beak you know because uh, herbs yeah they they don't tell you that but they used to put like a satchel a sachet of like herbs in the beak because herbs can have like you know antimicrobial or antibacterial properties um probably the smell of black death was terrible so i that- can't even and they were burning bodies consistently oh. so it's like and i i think that's a lot of what they did now too the how plutonian right so like mm. burning be cremated like how plutonian right go to hades uh-huh. to get burnt yeah uh-huh. Uh-huh. pluto's hades y'all pluto is hades yes so i don't know all of this all of this is is so relevant and so pertinent to the times that we're in and no we didn't see this coming like we didn't it doesn't matter what or who you are or how long you've been practicing anything you know, mm-hmm. there there are parts of us who, who don't, we don't want to expect the worst or assume the worst. We try to, like, use our gifts to see the better of, of things, but goddamn, like, like, this was certainly a darker turn that the it, it universe did not took. come to play. <laughs> no, no, it didn't. It really didn't. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's hilarious. So we want to be sure that people are equipped right now with an awareness of the sort of energy that we're not only under the influence of now, but will be um, to kind of use the your advantage. To yeah, you yes. need to know. There's a reason. Like, I find that the people that don't know anything about astrology who I've argued with online while Pluto's been <laughs> retrograde, <laughs> like, I'm talking. Oh, shit. I haven't seen some like shit with people trying to be like no no it like 
it, the equivalent of what would be like if I was like a heart surgeon and somebody who only took biology started arguing with me about proper procedure for a certain heart surgery. The fuck? Nah. Oh, see, <laughs> that's what we're not doing here. Someone's you trying know? to, you know, they were trying to overpower me with their ignorance. And I was just yes. like, and, and they brought up, well, astrologers don't even know what they're talking about because they're saying that NASA changed the the zodiac signs, but there's always been the con- of the constellations that they're and I'm like, oh my god, here we go. Astronomy and astrology are two sort of different. And then not only that, things. it showed that he did not recognize that Western astrology, which is what I practice, I don't practice um, sidereal astrology, which is actually based on the constellations and takes into account the one that I can't ever say. Um, not because I can't say it, like like it'll like, you know, summon anything, just I can't say the name. I feel like I, I fumble over a physicist all the time. Because- oh, I can't say that either. I can't, I, I, I forever I said aficuous. That's just how I said it because that's the only way it was gonna fucking come out of my mouth. Whatever that old dude's name is, I'm a Western astrologer and no shade to sidereal astrology at all, but Western astrology is not based on the constellations. So everything dude was saying proved A, he didn't know that there were any different practices or systems, okay? And that he didn't understand that the fucking astrology that most people practice is based on the apparent path of the sun up through the Tropic of Cancer and then down through the Tropic of Capricorn. So it's based on the weather as far as the Northern Hemisphere is concerned. And then the 12 signs are placed perfectly in a 360 degree wheel where there's 30 degrees for each sign. Whereas in sidereal, when it's looking at the zodiac constellations in the, in the sky, it's accounting for their actual size. Because in the sky, every zodiac sign doesn't measure the same amount of degrees. So, if you want to fight with somebody, you know what you're talking about. Um, and then he was just so, oh my God, so and you don't know what you're talking about. So, that was one Well, of that's the, a really good know. example of Gemini energy and Sagittarius energy. <laughs> that too, like he's That is a really truth. fucking good example of that, yes. And, but his the the plutonian theme was the the domination energy the the desire yes. to humiliate the desire to humiliate cuz let's not forget scorpio energy you know pluto rules you know yeah. scorpio so like that that scorpionic energy when they want to offend they are very cutting okay so he believed that he was insulting her practice and her intelligence that right. was his that was his goal was to humiliate you that yeah. is the plutonian domination energy which one would go that's not domination no it is when you break it down to its lowest common denominator he was trying to be yes he was trying to you be know, in control to be victorious and stand over right his mouth. and all right. the while all he was doing was flailing about his and favorite. all of this right and all of this it, it's it has a twinge of like I want to you know sort of rape your energy like and and one may say that that's kind of extreme but I think the times we live in are extreme and I think you know we have to be willing to see infringements upon our energy just as that I think we need to stop making excuses for what people are doing you know and especially since you know um I have Pluto in my my house of values, you know, and money. So my value system is consistently being restructured. Yeah. And I will not always tolerate the same shit day in and day out. You know, one day I might have like a lightning bolt understanding of, of how an energy is really interacting with me. You know, once I get out of my cancer energy, like the cancer energy, I feel like really allows me to feel it. The Scorpio energy that I have and where I have it, it allows me to sort of discern it mm-hmm. and figure out what it is. And then like I have that Aries energy that's like, okay, yeah, let's like pioneer this shit. Like let's deal with it now, you know, like let's come on. Um, and I, I just will not accept certain things. Um, and you learn as you go and you change your values based on, you know, what you've learned and what you've experienced. 
Yes, so, and you're reborning your self worth as as I look at the second house as the seat of what our values, including our value of ourselves. Yes. 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 So it's regenerated. So yep. she feels she feels that energy all the time. And wherever your Pluto is in your chart will show you where you feel that energy all the time. But let's look at transiting Pluto to you guys. I'm going to do my best as I'm trying to make my way through my coursework um, to do more informative sessions because I think a lot of people can benefit from them, especially because I want to make everything practical and show you how you can use it to figure out how you're being influenced by the astrological energy at any time so that you can work with that energy as opposed to against it. So even when you hear us talk about something coming up and we're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, yeah, we're exaggerating a little bit, but to be very honest with well, you. Well, we have like, you know, natural biases and stuff, of course. Don't, well, everyone does. Don't, yeah, don't take our biases or our experiences and place them on yourselves because a lot of people hate Mercury retrograde, but I never really seem to have that bad of a time. <laughs> like, Yeah, I it, don't mind it, it. Right. It may not be the best, but it it it. I minded like, the one in Pisces, though. I wanted that one to go away. No, I, was, I did. It, that I one was just lingering like, like a dead carcass. It wasn't. But even the transits that are from the so-called malefic planets like Saturn and mm -hmm. Pluto, okay? Like, yeah, okay, malefic is not a good word. <laughs> no, but, it's not. As I always say, there's a jewel somewhere. Yeah. There, there's some sort of, from destruction, which Pluto was definitely going to like um, usher in, beautiful things can be reborn. Phoenixes are born from their ashes. So, you know, you got to know about these energies, even the difficult ones, so that you're able to navigate them and then make wiser decisions. So I hope you're making wiser decisions right now yes. knowing what this energy is. Don't let people's purging unseat you. Recognize it for what it is. See that mirroring we were talking about and how it's effective on both sides? Yes. yes. Both of them, yeah. You will have people teaching you what you are and what you are not simultaneously, okay? So yes! be open be open i i myself have been in you know like tumultuous situations with people i'm emotionally entangled with and you know Child. It, 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 yeah i know i know i tried to say that in the best way that i can say no, you know listen, I mean? that is, listen listen <laughs> listen linda yes yes and i i have I have been, that is my saving grace, being able to discern what mine, what is mine and what isn't. It is, it well, has been say that again. That's, that is, that mm -hmm. is, that is, um, oh my God, why can't I think of the word? <laughs> Just because I want to say it. Discernment. Yes, yes. And, and your being, your level of discernment, your filter for it is being upgraded. So if you start feeling so much, like my mom told me she started to get really depressed. Like she felt like she was entering depression again. And I'm like, you're a cancer, a cancer sun in Scorpio is going through, you know, I mean, um, Pluto is in Capricorn. Like that, that so, squares uh, yeah. your, well, it, that, opposes uh, it. it opposes, sorry. Yeah. It opposes your son. Like you are not, like, <laughs> you are are not gonna have a good time because you are not very practical or grounded you know you're not grounded you are watery and you're trying to you know trudge your way through the deep dark recesses of your subconscious and responding emotionally instead and of being more logical right right Earth signs are going to uh, are going to like really not that they don't care about emotions, they work better with emotions, but you know, it, it's more like- We compartmentalize, we, we compartmentalize things, like we we prioritize our emotions and that's either a good thing or a bad thing. You know, like, because prioritizing an emotional response means that we're, we're really not acting the way that we want to in the moment. We're going like, how does this work best? How can I approach this in a way where this works best for me? To a degree, that is manipulation. Even if the intent is good, 
it's no, I, still, I get that. Yeah, totally. yeah. Because uh, I do it. I, I, you better believe I'm saying this because I know that I do it. Okay. My moon, my moon <laughs> is that is all that. I can't stand messy displays of emotion. Even yes. though I'm a Pisces, like when yes. I, and when I say messy, I, I think I have to clarify. When people are messy emotionally, and I don't deem it, um, it sounds so harsh and judgy. <laughs> I don't deem it appropriate. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, like this is not the time or place for that. Like, type, type, like vibe. I will just be like, nerp. <laughs> But it also means like I tend to keep my cool when everybody else is flipping out emotionally. Yes, I yeah. tend to be the same. Yeah, I tend like to be the same. I'm the person that comes up what to do. But when when I myself am going through something emotionally, the bad part that you were just talking about with Earth depriving the emotion, especially with Capricorn, is it's like okay. When you finally you lose deal your with shit, this. everything when comes up. Oh man, I because am. Everything gets locked away, <laughs> separated. And then when ah. I start dealing with it and it starts coming out of the little jail cells that I've put it in. Yep. yep. And then it yep. all meets up. And then then you have to think of the fact that my moon is trying my Mars and my Jupiter. So, like, I'm oh, really shit. gonna feel it. Jupiter's gonna make me, and then, like, the aggression or whatever comes up out of it is gonna be strong. So, I just like, realized, like, Oh God! Yeah, and it also yeah. trines with all my it trines my Venus too in Taurus. So like I have a yes. grand Earth trine con- yes. conceding my Moon. Yes. So it's just kind of like whoa. All right. Well, um, that came up, but we didn't finish <laughs> it. But I think it's significant to tell people that with the things that are being purged and just real quick going back to power, please. Yes. Oh God. Yes. You will find that discernment is really going to help you. Um, also the fact that some of these things are being purged in people and they're not even aware. So whether a person is consciously and being as though, you know, Pluto energy is talking about looking beneath the surface, a lot of people are not conscious about what's underneath the surface. So you'll notice with your interactions with people, um, you're going like you, like the Renaissance mystic was saying, you're going to see glimpses, little Freudian energetic slips. Mm-hmm. of what's really beneath the surface. And as it has to do with structures and um, rebuilding or tearing down structures, things that have outlived their usefulness, his Capricorn represents old old shit, traditional shit, okay? And Pluto yeah. is in Capricorn. So it's like the stuff that has reigned thus far is up for review. <laughs> and some of them structures aren't working. So that structures that people have in work and their relationships in all types of areas of their life. So you're going to see stuff come up for people regarding how things are. And there's going to be a revolution happening because you're either going to be in agreement with them that things stay the same <laughs> or you're going to be like, fuck you. <laughs> or you're looking at a structure and you're going, you know what? I see what we could keep, but something needs to change. And then that might be a problem for someone else. But the purge yes. is coming up to show you power please. So just be aware. Be aware. This is it it is it's very interesting. In fact, um I do we have time? Like really quick. Yeah. I pulled I pulled sure. cards for the for the occasion. I had no limit. Okay, good. So um I pulled five for the, we, you know, we were really coming here to talk about Pluto and that's how long Pluto will be in retrograde four. So I pulled five cards and then I pulled an angel card. So uh, for the first month, you know, we have the wheel of fortune, which is so fitting because there is just this giant shift of karma, um, of energy and, you know, I honestly feel as if, you know, again, Pluto retrograde started during tour season. On the Wheel of Fortune card, you see all of the fixed signs usually. So you'll usually see like uh, Aquarian energy. Yes, Aquarian energy, Leonin energy, you know, Taurus energy, and um, what's the next, what's the fire one? No, no, no. What's fixed water? Scorpio, there you go. Yeah, okay. Um, Usually you'll see those. So I really feel as if like, it's just sort of, it's allowing you to know like what all energies are sort of being 
present here. Here we see, I see Virgo, Leo, Taurus, and an eagle. So I don't know, maybe like, maybe Aquarius maybe that is Aquarius I don't know okay but either way there's just this giant shift in in karma in in circumstance you know and then we have the nine of cups in reverse so the nine of cups is sort of like self fulfillment like emotional fulfillment that comes from the self because I um they usually say it's like the wish fulfillment card but that I really do feel is the Ten of Cups. I don't, I feel like Nine of Cups is is you focusing on how you can fulfill yourself. So there is such a, a change in circumstance where we are being held more accountable for our shit more than ever. Like the universe, I've been saying this for years, but the universe is not playing anymore. And every year the universe just shows out with how much it's not fucking playing anymore. Like it just keeps the standards just keep rising and 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 improving and you know um the value system of how quick your energy is like slapped back at you is crazy like the (laughs) you're having instant karmic returns like instant instantly you're feeling the energy you're putting out the frequency you're sending out that pendulum is swinging back faster and faster you know what i mean Mm -hmm. that's already been happening (laughs) yes and and we have five more like almost like maybe almost four months yet but currently five then we have death so it's like there is literally going to be an inward focus because of the shifts in circumstance okay then we have death which is just transition and honestly probably a lot more deaths in this case there are a, there are a lot of deaths so i i, I have to mention i that, understand. understand you know what i mean like there there already are so many deaths and not just from covid but people like who are dying from suicides or you know um heart attacks and things along those lines like all of the other prevalent issues that humans uh, americans had are still, they're still suffering those as well on, in conjunction with the virus, you know? So yeah. we might see a very, um, a real influx of, of health issues. Um, then we have the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups is like celebration, collaboration. We see like three goddesses with a chalice in their hands. And, you know, the other two have their their hands sort of they're holding the chalice but they also have their hands like sort of uh covered it they like they covered the chalice and then the woman in the front has hers open and i feel like as there's there's a real talk of like leadership here i feel okay. like there's it's it's collaboration but all of us have to figure out how best to lead our lives you know with other people it gives me very gemini vibes to be honest it really it really does um and i i honestly feel as if this is that energy that we need to really be tapping into like taking more responsibility and figuring out how to, how we can be more responsible with our energy and also how our energies can um sort of harmonize with other people like how can we reconcile our differences or how can we come to a place of understanding rather than being at an impasse all the time <clears throat> and <clears throat> a lot of the time impasses are due to a person or both people not wanting to hold themselves accountable you know and then we have the hermit the hermit's telling you to go within like you're not you're not you, you're not seeing the bigger picture so <laughs> there <laughs> there really is the focus here um there really is a focus on really going within and, and realizing that you know we are unhappy because we choose to be unhappy and all the ways in which we are unhappy are going to be highlighted during this time you know um and i i really believe that this is this this marks a really huge turning point um transformation i feel is an understatement to be honest if you're willing to do it too that death can occur death is not a bad thing no, it's not. It's it's never, it's never, it's never a bad thing. So then we got the Knight of Cups, um, which is Archangel Ariel. So this is perception and revelation, um, discovers hidden treasures, reveals secrets of nature. First of all, this is a water sign cup, right? Knight of Cups. 
cups or water signs. You know, uh, I'm traditionally. Tarot. I know, like, I work with my oracle cards. <clears throat> I am still just. It's okay. Tarot. Believe me, I don't, I'm still learning too. That is a gradual process. But the cups are usually the water element. Okay. Um, so we have a very Cancerian, Scorpionic, Piscean sort of energy here. Um, and it has very Plutonian themes, revealing secrets, you know, perception, revelation, discovers hidden treasure. Like all of those are very Plutonian, Scorpionic in nature. So I really do feel as if this is this is like an an added validation that this is the work you have to be lending yourself to. Um, you know, the revealing God is what the angel is called. <laughs> the revealing God. If that's not spot on, I don't know what would be. Listen. You know, we <laughs> these are the revelations. Like this this is this is the event, you know, it's not a singular day where your life just completely changes. We are going to go through a constant flux um, of energy. Ooh. Processes. Um, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Plural mm-hmm. processes. I think like processes. You were earlier, people sometimes think, "Oh, I guilt from that." So blah 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 blah. Oh, I get so. I'm I'm sorry, and this is where perhaps I'm not very forgiving. But um, when you say like I awakened in like 2012, I'm like, okay, <laughs> we all. We all did. That literally, humanity was reset. You know, based on the Mayan <laughs> calendar, like humanity was being reset. Everyone fucking started awakening in 2012. I need people to stop making it sound as if awakening is a one-time fucking thing. It's not. That's why I always say my spiritual awakening started. Yes, in, started when it began. That doesn't mean that yes. I am. That's why I get so mad. I know, I know. On these posts when people are so fucking self-righteous and asshole-ish and fucking type A and yes. just want to kind of be like, well, you need to be more evolved because if you were really spiritual, you would think like I think. And it's like, bitch, fuck you. <laughs> what I think is I'm continuously <laughs> open to growth and change. So I ain't gonna never step out of my skin or, or you know, open my mouth to be like, I'm perfect. I'm so healed from everything. No, I have healed from things. I am still healing from things. Yes, it's a continuous it's process. A continuous fucking process. All these self-righteous dickheads acting like they like levitating <laughs> and healing all of a sudden. Like, oh, I am. That's the being of life. Like they came out of their mom's womb just like glowing and shit. Yeah, you just you just levitated out your mom poom poom. Like, woo! <laughs> no, I don't want to hear that shit. Like, I feel like this. <laughs> and I, sh- I should have just put it in writing last time I argued with someone on the page. If that's the type of spiritual person you are, I am not for you. Yeah, I yeah. I'm not for you. Okay, I wouldn't even say my services are for you because I will give you the read when I do mm-hmm. my work. I don't care to just be nice. I'm going to tell you the what for because what did I say ever- earlier? I love everyone, so I feel duty down to be able to use my gifts to be able to help people. But what you ain't gonna do is tell me that I should be of some state of perfection that you've attained. Because first of all, you haven't attained it. The fact that you think that is the opposite of what is going on. <sighs> the mere, the mere like train of thought is contradictory to the point yes. that they're driving across. It's like, it's so oh, it like- Oh, dissolves my ego so much. First of all, I don't <laughs> want to completely dissolve my ego. Bitch. No, honestly, I feel like they dissolved their common fucking sense. <laughs> Yeah, really what I feel like they did. Like, yeah, yeah. You did so much emotional bypassing that you just like really, really. Oh God. Some people drive. Yeah. Don't, so y'all don't do that. We're talking about being open to the work. We're talking about being present to it. We're talking about accepting. You said something earlier about resistance and how different things would persist from it. Whatever it yes. is you're resisting keeps going on. So if you resist healing, you're deepening your wound and deepening your need to heal. Yes. So if you're, you're filling your wound with yes. garbage. 
Yeah, so if you're open to healing, what's going to start happening is you're going to realize, like, if you had a cut and it was really bad and it started to get infected and you had- You rubbed it with shit? And if you went to seek medical attention for it, it's probably going to hurt when they first start working on you. Yeah. But that's part of healing. You can't be like, well, I'm not going to go to the doctor because that alcohol or whatever is going to hurt. It needs to hurt. It's part of the process. (laughs) They have such- polar thinking yes. everybody's polarized nobody yes. sees all these shades of gray you, you know, know neutrality neutrality is, is a word that has not gotten the best you know um the connotations are not the best you know people see neutrality as as like cowardice and i i do believe that some people choose neutrality out of cowardice but i believe that 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 is it is a necessary function to be to be able to be neutral and passive or aggressive. You know what I mean? Like I guess I, I, guess I don't look at it as I'm being neutral. No. It's, I, I don't it, it's like, all right, if I, I put it to you like this. If people are polarized, there there's people posed at one side and people posed at the other. And I'm considering everything from both sides, right? Sometimes right. I, I might slide a little bit more to this side. I mean, yeah, we all do that. You, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I look at neutrality as being, like, dead in the middle all the time. And... Maybe I should say not, objective. Maybe I should say objective. Yeah, yeah, neutral okay, is like yeah. a bad word. <laughs> like, I'm not yeah. processing it right. I'm like, mm-mm, I'm not neutral. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no. And I'm also willing to be wrong. That's the, that's the problem with most people. Like, I am so open that I'm also willing to entertain the possibility that I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong and you call me out on it and can show me why I'm wrong and help me understand, I am grateful to you. You have taught mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. You have taught me. But yep. Believe it or not, even for a Taurus, I still enjoy learning things. Yeah, and I'm sometimes when you learn things, lot. you learn things because you were incorrect. You need to always be open. And it's harder for some people than others. But yes, it's it like, is. that's the theme coming up with that that transit being open and t- open to the ideas. So mm-hmm. while the power plays are going on, the best thing that you can remember for yourself is you have to be willing to grow. You have to be willing to be present to what people are showing you, what's coming up from under the surface for them so that yep. you can use your discernment to decide whether you're going to take what's being brought to the surface personally or if you're going to look at it objectively. Because, oh, this is another thing wanted people to look at speaking of Pluto last thing I wanted to talk about about Pluto that we didn't talk about there is a need very much so at this moment I think for you know I've been getting a lot of requests for like relationship readings Mm -hmm. and and synastry and stuff like that so since we're talking about Pluto it just touched on me to make sure that I told people not only are you looking for where Pluto will transit your chart or where your natal Pluto is, but also where does your Pluto fall on anybody you interact with chart? This could be a romantic relationship. This could be your friends or whatever. Mm. So you can see what the dynamics are and, you know, how they kind of, how they'll be important. Because people's Pluto issues will be coming out. Okay. That's interesting. How does that affect your chart? Now, (laughs) taking into account all the different houses and where things could be, like if someone's Pluto fell in your first house, then there's like a really strong power dynamic that's possible for the good or for the bad. Right. Because in the house of self... Okay, their Pluto is falling in your house of self. You could literally look at that if you wanted to look at the bad portions of it, like they're trying to control you. Or they, mm. control you. they feel as though they have power over you. Now, the thing about it is, if I think I have power over a person, but the power that I think I have is to like maybe inspire them to be their best self because I'm watching what they're doing and who they want to be. And so it's from a genuine place. It's like a helpful place then I could go, okay, well, I have this resource, so I can put that in motion for that person. That's me exerting power in a way to their self. Like, you see positive, but the negative side of that could be 
literally trying to control somebody because you want them to do what you want them to do. Yep. And then the house person, so if like someone's Pluto was in your first house, how you would feel was probably a little leery of the person. You'd be very present to control, to, to, to the like control they're trying to exert over you. And I wonder where hours fall within relationship to each other. I'll look in that in a second. I got to charge my phone because it died. Mm-hmm. And my chart capabilities just wanted to go away. But it's really <laughs> interesting. If someone's Pluto is over your second house, ah, that's tough. <laughs> I think I'd cringe more if someone's Saturn fell in your second house because I feel like mm-hmm. they, they would restrict your money. But you could see this potentially being good or bad. Right. They may be able to be the seat of shared resources for you um, Mm, at mm -hmm. some sort of new way for you to earn or have possessions. Their influence, they might empower you to, you know, get more money. Or on the negative aspect of things, they'll cause you to lose money. (laughs) They'll steal Mm -hmm. money from you, maybe. And weaken your values. Yeah, so, so like higher vibrations and lower vibrations of everything third house I would think that they would try to control your thought process or yep, thought the way you think or realize they have influence over your thoughts now someone can realize that positively or negative and try to stimulate you yeah depending mm-hmm. on what they want or don't want um, your fourth house this literally to me feels like someone peering in deep into the depths of your private life because mm. that's what fourth house matters are. Because the, the yes. fourth is opposite the tenth. The tenth is the highest part of the chart. That's your public face. So the fourth is your private life. Okay, this is this is someone who has transformative power over that area of your life. How could that be bad? How could that be good? Fifth house is your vol- your um, vitality, your self-expression, your mm-hmm. passions, children, all types of, like, anything coming from the heart. Leo ruled house. Inner child, even. Yes. That sort of stuff. Dating, casual sex, it, it rules over that, too. Sixth house, habits, day-to-day activities, your immediate work surroundings, how you serve other people. Yep. This person would be very influential over your your day to day dealings. Is that a good or a bad thing? You know, very true. Mm-hmm. Seventh house, your one to one relationships. Ooh, what a power that must be. <laughs> In the wrong way. You literally have a person that potentially is powerfully impactful of the relationships you have. So it gets deep. Yeah. Absolutely. So if y'all can look at your chart, your charts, see where Pluto is for you, okay? See what house it's in, what sign it's in. And then also look at where transiting Pluto, so where Pluto is in the sky right now, where it's hitting your chart. And then if you are interested in dynamics between you and another person, look and see where their Pluto falls in your chart. And then look um, to see where your Pluto falls in theirs. Now we can get more complicated, but I want to keep it simple. I know a lot of people are just still learning some things because there's other stuff to look at too. But, but I'm going to keep it that simple for now because like we didn't talk about Pluto T for, <laughs> for like an entire... Quite some time. Yeah, like 284 years or whatever it is that Pluto takes to fully go around the sun. <laughs> yes, yes. But seriously, keep your eyes peeled. Keep your heart open to growth and transformation and realize something's got to burn to the ground in order to be rebuilt. And this is the energy that we're under. So something something needs to be transformed. And some things can't transform unless they die and are reborn. So you can't be yes. scared of that. Yes, absolutely. It Death is just birth and birth is just death. It's the same. It, it really is. It's the same thing. Yeah. You and the acceptance of this oh boy does it make life easier so (laughs) yes 
He was hoping that you guys can do that. I thank you for joining me for another episode of Spiritual Gangster Certified. This has been the Renaissance Mystic, who you can reach where? Uh, you can reach me on Instagram. Um, it's the underscore Renaissance underscore Mystic. You can find me on Facebook at the Renaissance Mystic. I have a group and a Facebook page. So you can, you know, add yourself to either or or both. And um, yeah, that's where you can catch me. So you guys keep your wits about you. I thank you for like joining us again. And we will see you on the other side. Peace. Peace.